Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. Today we're looking at a much unloved 3D chipset from Silicon Integrated Systems, or SIS, as part of GPU June 2. For those that aren't aware, GPU June 2 is an initiative started by Pixel Pipes in which we focus on 3D accelerators of all shapes and sizes during the month of June. I'm choosing to look at integrated graphics, as this is what I was stuck with for many years until I could afford a decent discrete card and a suitable motherboard that could support them. The motherboard we're using today is the Asus CUSIFX a budget Flex ATX board released around the year 2000 supporting Socket 370. It features the SIS 630 chipset, did not have an AGP slot for discrete 3D cards and instead relied on PCI for expansion, but it did contain an integrated AGP 3D accelerator, the SIS 300. Here we have a test bench featuring a very legitimate looking SIS background from the driver pack. The system is using a Coppermine Pentium 3700E, and using CPU Z Vintage Edition for benchmarks, we can see a score of 1144.3 for CPU and 4958.2 for FPU. I've also used a benchmark in the old version of 7-Zip, an 8-meg dictionary-based MIPS test. We get 496 for the CPU. I plan on using these tests to baseline CPU results across other retro Windows 9X projects. Anyway, enough about the CPU, let's get into the star of the show. During the late 90s, SIS released their first 3D chipset, which was designed to be very cheap. The 6326 was a very weak chipset for gaming, and it found itself at the bottom of many 3D benchmarks. After a few revisions of the 6326, and about 7 million unit sales, apparently, SIS decided to release a follow-up in 1999, the SIS 300. This was sold as a discrete card, and also integrated into the chipset we're looking at today, the 630. SIS claimed 3D gaming performance on the new 300 was five times faster than the 6326, a very good next generation uplift. Unfortunately, five times not much is still not much, but anyway. One, 
So there we have the SIS 300 playing a few Windows 9x 3D games. Now let's check out some benchmarks and compare this against the Unichrome IGP from my previous video. In GL Quake we bench using time demo runs of good old Demo 1. At 640x480 and 16-bit we see excellent frame times from the SIS 300 even at stock. I was able to overclock the SIS 300 to about 166MHz clock from a stock of 100 using power strip and it did squeeze a few more extra frames here. I could also overclock the front side bus on the Pentium 3 to achieve a 933 MHz clock in total on the CPU. At 800x600 the SIS can hold on with the overclock GPU but it fades away at stock. 1024x768 is below average and on more demanding seeds it would be quite choppy. Expendable doesn't appear to like the SIS 300 at all and the overclock didn't really help. Turok does however and we get outstanding frame rates even at stock. Overclocking the CPU seems to give another 20% improvement. Incoming drops the SIS 300 back to earth with a good frame rate at 640x480 but drops away badly from there. One thing to note though, the sky did actually look better on SIS than it did on the Unichrome. I'll just flash up a comparison here. Forsaken gave us an okay result but roughly half the frame rate of the Unichrome. It's still very playable at 640x480 and 800x600 even in busy scenes but I wouldn't push it with 1024x768. Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed appears not to like the SIS 300 too much. Overclocking the GPU didn't seem to help at all and if I overclocked the CPU the game just crashed. Frame rates were low and at 640x480 the lower settings it sort of felt playable. The Unichrome got much more upside here. Tweaking the settings could get you a low medium mix at about 640x480 with 30 frames however we didn't really get that with the SIS. Let's round out the game benches with Quake 3 using the 4DM66 time demo. Using the fastest preset we get good results at 512 by 384 and this would be the mode I'd recommend for the SIS 300. 640x480 would drop too many frames and sort of be a bit choppy in the heavier battles. While 48.5 isn't a great result, it does outpace the Unichrome and does actually take the points here. Now I'll quickly rip through the synthetics. These aren't perfect but might be interesting to use later for some baselining with some other Windows 9X projects. Under PC Player 3D benchmarks, the SIS did about as well as Unichrome at 1024x768, but at the lower resolutions, the Unichrome really pulls away. These are awful scores anyway, so it doesn't really matter. On the theme of awful, check out 3D Mark 2001 SE. The SIS is really bad. 588 is the lowest score I think I've ever seen. At one point, I think the benchmark actually went backwards. Or maybe it was me. Finally we've got the CPU benchmarks. Again this is just for comparison and reference. The C3 CPU from Vire is a bit of a different beast to the P3. I realise it's not a like for like comparison but it was interesting to pit them against each other. The C3 seems to hold its own except for an FPU benchmarks but this seems about right for the time. Intel was very strong in this area. So what do we think of the SIS 300? Based on the benchmarks and testing I conducted I found it to be a mixed bag. We got great performance at low resolution in some games like GL Quake and Turok but we got average to below average in everything else. Can we still have fun on the SIS 300? Absolutely, but you're going to want to use low resolutions like 512x384, 640x480 and keep the detail settings as low as possible to keep those frame rates up in heavier scenes. I'm not done with this chip yet though and I've started building a playlist of early DX3 to DX6 games to test it against in the future. But for now, I think the video today is wrapped up. If you're still here at this point, thank you. Maybe check out some of the other GPU2 videos in the official playlist, I've got them linked below. See you next time.